But first, a word to, about the lecture series as a whole. And the best way of getting at what I'm about is to take each of the, the three words in the title, music, modernity, and God, although not in that order. Let's take modernity first, one of those concertina words, words that can be expanded and contracted at will. Some scholars use it to mean an age or an era. Often that means roughly from the Renaissance through to the end of the 20th century, or perhaps through to the present day. We live in the modern age. Others use it to speak of a cast of mind, a sort of cluster of habits of thought that constellate around certain key concepts or ideas. In these lectures, I'll be thinking of it in a very wide sense. I'll think of modernity as certain patterns of thought and action that especially mark the period from roughly, let's say, the Renaissance to the end of the 20th century, and which are still probably alive today. For example, a confidence in the powers of scientific reasoning, mechanization, the notion of progress, linear views of time, constitutional democracy, and so on. The patterns of thinking and action that have come to form the environment we live in, have lived in over the last 500 years or so. Is modernity waning? Some would say it is, hence the beloved term postmodern, a concertina word again, though perhaps late modern would be a better term for what we're now witnessing. And I'm just going to leave that debate at that point. You might be glad to know. Second word, music. Most of the music that streams at us in this culture is the product of Western modernity. Not all. So-called world music is available as never before. But still, most of the music that streams to us in restaurants, bars, elevators, TVs, iPods, most of it is the child of modernity. It is what is called Western tonal music, and it emerged in full flower, uh, roughly in the middle of the 17th century, and has come to dominate Western culture ever since. It is the music of Beethoven and Mozart, bebop, hip-hop, Franz Liszt and Lady Gaga. So I'm concerned with modernity and music, how the music, how this type of music links up with the patterns of thought and action characteristic of the modern age. But there's a third word in the title, of course, and that's the word God. The theological dimension, what I'm about. The thesis of these lectures is that music can and enable us to read the story of our culture with the eyes of Christian faith and respond in fresh ways to some of the deepest dilemmas of our time. And I put that down there, as you can see in the hand there. Of course, many writers have invited us to read the story of modernity with Christian um, eyes. Wonderful writers, including new college lecturers, Oliver Donovan, Stanley Hauerwas, Elaine Storky, and others. But if we look closely, great as these um, accounts are, we find most commentators on modernity typically look to philosophy, politics, economics, and science as the key tools to lay bare the driving forces of modernity. Philosophy, politics, economics, and science, and some other disciplines as well. I have nothing against anybody from these disciplines, by the way. But they're very often turned to as the key tools for uncovering, so to speak, what's really going on. The arts will tend to be pulled in to illustrate things already, it's presumed, fully understood, and to usually to brighten up otherwise dull lectures. Now, I think this view of the arts as merely illustrative is really quite inadequate. So taking music as my example, I hope to show first that music has been profoundly caught up in the big theological struggles of the last 500 years in Western culture. Can we trust the physical world as a good creation? Is the world our intended home? And so on, I could go on question after question. Second, I want to show that music bears a unique witness to those struggles, often showing more deeply than many other disciplines and activities what is actually at stake. And third, music can in some cases actually enable us to see through and beyond some of the deepest dilemmas of our time and respond in fresh ways as Christians. I know, heady claims for something so mundane and trivial as music. Beethoven symphonies, the U2 song, the silky jazz at Starbucks, the rattle from the iPod earphones on the other side of the bus. As Garrison Keillor put it, like the sound of distant chainsaws. <laughs> Nevertheless, claims I think that are worth defending. And this is very much work in progress, please. I hope you'll understand as well. Now, each of the lectures focuses on one of the giant issues of modernity, as Trevor was saying today, creativity. Second, freedom. It's tomorrow and the day after, language. 